So why are people utilizing it? Uh, the big one is tax deferral. I'm gonna give you a, a tax example here in a few minutes. Um, I talk to a lot of people and, and oftentimes they say, well, it's just 15% federal, I might just pay it. And maybe they should pay it, but it's usually not just 15% taxes. It's usually uh, significantly more than that. Um, some other reasons people are trying to diversify. Um, Noel and, and Greg and I talked the other day and specifically diversifying into, into things like you're offering, single family rentals. Maybe they're tired of, of the retail, especially now. Uh, or maybe they want to diversify into different parts of the country. They have increased purchasing power. If you're not sending 25 or 30 or 35 percent of your gain to the government, you can buy additional properties or buy larger properties. So you can make your money work for you instead of giving it over to the government. Or sometimes people have owned a property a long time and they've depreciated that asset uh, down to zero. If they buy up in that situation, they could get some benefits from from a new depreciation or the difference in what they sold and, and if they buy up significantly. So those are some of the reasons, but the real big one is taxes. And we'll show you that here. This is just round numbers here, but just to give you an idea, selling a property for $500,000, we bought it 10 years ago for 300. And during that time, we took 145,000 depreciation. So our, our value has gone up $200,000. That's our appreciation part. Uh, so federal capital gains, it's either 15 or 20%, depending upon income. So they're going to pay 15% of the 200. State varies. Here in Minnesota, the highest uh, rate is 9.85. So it's almost 10%. And then depreciation recapture, that's the one that is not on people's radar sometimes. Uh, but you pay 25% of that back if you sell and don't use a 1031 exchange. So you hey, can Joe, see. Can you a favor? Could you stop on the on the depreciation recapture and just of give a little more of an explanation of what that is? So owner, but you know, buyer buys an investment property and then is deducting. You probably explained it better than me, and I, it took me a while to actually hear a good explanation of that. So I wouldn't mind hearing it again. Sure. So, so if you have an, a a real estate uh, investment, you're going to be able to depreciate that asset, not the land, but the the. Um, the improvements, the building over the time that you own the property. Um, if it's residential, it's 27 and a half years. And if it's commercial, it's 39 years. And that's different than there's some cost segregation that can accelerate that. That's a different discussion. But you're, so you're getting a tax break each year, right? So uh, in this case, we took the, um, I took $400,000 divided by 27 and a half. That's how I got about $14,000 a year in depreciation. So right. So just to jump in again, so the, yep. the um, real plain language on that depreciation and the tax break is that you're literally taking that chunk of money, 127th of the value of the property that you bought and deducting it from your taxes yes. as, as if it's an expense, as if you laid the money out as an expense. The whole purchase price of the property can be expensed over time, which means you're reducing your tax burden year by year by taking that depreciation. But then later on, when you sell it, they get you with the recapture and just explain what that is when you sell. So you, you sell the property, you pay capital gains. That's pretty easy to understand. What does the depreciation recapture mean? So whatever that amount is, in our example here, they've depreciated 145,000. They're good. You're going to have to pay back 25% of that amount. That's, that's the, the amount they, when you get the break, it's, it's depending upon your income. So it could be 20, it could be 28, it could be 33. It could, it could be all over. Um, so to simplify that a little bit, they just tax it at 25%. Right, because the depreciation is that you're due. taking, the deductions you're taking and the depreciation is against your ordinary income. Correct. Right? So yep. what's happening is that the IRS is give a, a thing with one hand saying you can pay lower taxes by depreciating this investment as right. a way to encourage people to buy real estate. But at the end, when you sell it, they basically want to get most of that back. Correct. Um, yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, that's, a, that's a, a really good explanation. And it's just not on people's radar. It's really not. They're, like I said, they say, oh, it's 50% federal. And then they see numbers like this, 78,000 here doing taxes divided by $200,000 gain is, is 39%, right? And that's, that's why we're doing tons of exchanges. That's why we're busy because people are like, I'm not doing that. I'm not interested in paying 39% taxes. And what if they're selling outside that 27 and a half year period? Well, it's been it's been depreciated down to zero then. So there may be benefits from selling and moving up 
if they sold for five hundred thousand dollars and and bought for a million, for example, they would have an additional five hundred thousand dollars that they could use to depreciate that asset again. Does that make sense? I think his question might actually also been around. So if I if I hold it twenty seven and a half years and I fully depreciated, am I paying twenty five percent tax on the whole the amount that I depreciated? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yep. This is actually Sometimes really important hold, for us to be a couple years. That's why, you know, when we're talking with folks, when we say, well, when should we be talking about 1031s? If they've held it, you know, three years, that's one thing. If, you know, they, maybe they had a big price change and that it makes sense to do an exchange. But sometimes people have held it 20 years. And even if the price hasn't changed way up, maybe they bought it for 100,000 and now it's 140 or 130. If they've held it for 20 years, an exchange is still probably going to be very beneficial to them because of that depreciation. So that's one of the discussions we have. How long have they held it? That's when you should be thinking about having the discussion. It's interesting. I'm harping on this because I feel like it's something that if we're skilled at explaining the simplest form of this thing, like I, I, and I've known this for years, but like this conversation has led me to see it in a different way. I pay this amount of money for the property. So here's what I put in. Here's my gain. They're going to get me on the gain with capital gains. Are they going to get me on the amount that I originally purchased because I depreciated it? Yep. So they're, they're basically taxing you on what it's basically the full value of what it's worth now. Mm -hmm. Not just what you paid for, but what you, um, what you gained by appreciation. Yes. Yeah, they're getting theirs. That's for sure. That's why companies like ours are, are busy.